清晨的起点，从迈开第一步开始。新闻为你走在最前线。财经，洞悉商机，赚大钱。问政，民生摆在最优先。不慌不忙，踏出稳健的步伐。City Plus。城市向前行。早安，你好，这也是让你每次收听都有收获的 City Plus， 我是运翔。早安，你好，是德才。刚过去的四月二号呢，是世界自闭症醒觉日。或许我们一直在老调重弹说，说希望能够通过这一类活动呢，唤醒更多人能够接纳这个群体。但我觉得说需要。做到接受，我们就必须去了解来自星星的孩子、嗯。那根据马来西亚自闭症协会的统计呢，全国有超过三十万人是自闭症患者，那也就是说，每六十八人当中就有一人。是自闭儿。那目前他们所面临最大的问题呢，除了是教育课题，当然也就是社会的包容度和接纳度。没错，所以今天在我们的节目当中呢，除了就是要了解之外哦，我觉得我们身为社会的一部分呢，我们应该要思考的一个问题就是，我们是否接纳他们的存在呢？还是我们只不过是纯粹只停留在知识的这个阶段而已？嗯、所以，我们希望今天在这个节目当中呢，和你一起来审视这个问题。那今天在我们的城市生活家呢，就来。来了一位特别的、非常特别的一位嘉宾哦，他本身呢，除了是自闭症儿的家长之外呢，他还有一个非常特别的身份，我相信大家也都非常的关注，也都呃非常的熟悉，也就是他是我们的科艺部长 YB k y r i 的这个妻子，在我们当中就有 Nori Abdullah 在我们当中 ，Hello Nori， Hi， Hi， Bon Nori， Welcome to the show， Thank you， 优化城市的质感。深化生活的质量，城市生活家。当然，今天在我们的节目当中呢，我们会以双语的方式来进行。We will be doing bilingual in our interview today, and especially, I suppose,、uh, before going into Nori's personal life with uh her children, which is uh Timo, uh probably we should go into autism in Malaysia. Uh, autism disorder in Malaysia, and、uh, maybe Nori can explain or briefly let us know that how do you usually tell or introduce to someone who had never heard of autism disorder before? Maybe、uh, you can share more about what are the biggest misconception about autism in our society, Nori. Sure. Thank you very much、uh, to both of you and to City Plus Radio Station for having me.、Um, I will try my best. I'm sorry I don't speak Mandarin. I have not been vaccinated <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. But yeah, I appreciate the being bilingual today. Okay, so for about autism,、uh, so autism is actually a neurological and developmental、uh, condition.、Um, it it happens、uh, from birth.、Uh, Usually, we don't yet, until today, know what the causes are. It's probably a combination of several different factors, including genetics.、Um, a person、um, with autism、uh, can vary from another from another one. There's a reason why we call this the spectrum、uh, spectrum. It's a spectrum disorder because,、uh, you know, there's a famous saying by Dr. Stephen Shaw, who is.、Um, Actually, also、uh, an an advocate and an expert, but happens to be an individual on the spectrum as well.、Um, he says that if you've met one person with autism, then you've only met you know one person with autism, and that、um, basically、uh, explains how varied it can be. But some of the common issues are difficulty with social communication.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Difficulty with、uh, dealing with、uh, change. There's a certain amount of rigidity sometimes in terms of how their brain is wired. So big or small changes can seem very overwhelming. And、um, there is this. There is also a tendency towards repetitive behavior,、mm. and this can come out in the form of verbal or in terms of movement and things like that. These are the some of the common things、um, which you find. But having said that, if you have autism. Uh, you could also have a whole slew of other things.、Um, very, very often, you will have sensory integration issues. There could be things like ADHD, you know, which is related to hyperactivity, and then、uh, a bunch of other things as well. So it really depends. Now, when it comes to misconceptions, I think there are still quite a few out there.、Um, you know, some people believe that it's somehow associated with being. 
like a genius or something, that even if you are challenged in one area, that you might have a big talent or be particularly like, um, you know, uh, abled in another area. Uh, that's not necessarily true, although there are autistic people who have, who are specially talented. Um, and then on the other hand, there are some people also believe that it is, it is so limiting that, you know, the autistic people um, cannot speak or they're frequently, you know, just moving like this. They're always characterized by their behaviors. So that's not necessarily true either. It is it is a wide spectrum of things. I do want to mention that it is not an illness or a disease. It's, uh, you know, simply another way of being. It's a different human condition. It makes you uniquely human, but, you know, you're a, you're a person like any other person. Uh, just as we've seen uh, people with physical disabilities, we understand that a little bit better because we can see, right? Like, for example, if you see someone in a wheelchair, you understand that they probably cannot walk. And so we've been able as a, as a people, as a society, to accommodate that a little bit better. But when it comes to something that involves the brain, something intellectual, mental, and things like that, it's a bit harder to understand because the symptoms manifest themselves uh, through behavior for example, and the difficulties that I mentioned. So, um, yeah, if you if you want to ask me about some specific, um, you know, uh, ideas or stereotypes, I might be, I'm happy to answer. I'm, I'm not sure if there's anything else, but essentially, um, that's what it is. Mm. So when it's come to a support system, what kind of a support system we have in Malaysia, especially for those families with autistic children? Do you think that our government is doing good enough in supporting this family? You know, I think all over the world, there is probably not enough as yet to support mm. people who are differently abled. Um, so in the... With respect to the government, and we, if we talk about, um, let's take it step by step, yeah? So if we look at schools and we look at public education, school akabangsan of, of different types, um, we have, for example, the zero rejection policy, which means that every child is entitled to an education. Yes. And that allows children to be able to attend school. Now, that doesn't mean that the level of support is, um, is ideal or that there's enough of it. Um, there is more inclusion, for for example, when you talk about the preschool level. So when you're talking about tadika, you know, you're talking about um, the younger age uh, before you get into primary and secondary. Um, it is generally more inclusive. But once you get to primary and secondary, you have to look out for schools that have the integration program. Sekolah PPKI. So PPKI schools would have classes and train teachers to support um, kids who are different learners and differently abled. The thing that's difficult, however, is that these children are grouped together. So there is not always, I mean, it would depend on the school, of course. So my oldest boy was in a, uh, my oldest boy, Jibril, who's Timur's older brother. He, he was in a PPKI uh, school in, uh, you know, um, in KL and uh, you know they they had things like a dyslexia lab so that they were able to differentiate but generally every other child so it doesn't matter for example if you had down syndrome or you had a general developmental delay versus autism you know you had to be grouped together with uh, with that child and it's the same for sekolah menengah for secondary schools um, we don't so we have integration but we don't yet have inclusion and mm. what inclusion means essentially is that um, Every child is going to be given the same opportunities and accepted to be part of the group with all the other children, even if they are differently abled. But at the same time, the support systems are in place to provide that kind of accommodation so that they're able to also take part in the same opportunities as other children, right? We're not quite there yet, but, you know, to be fair, this is true for uh, many, many other countries in the world. So um, then uh, the next step that um, is difficult is the transitioning from school to, the, to whatever is, is, is next, right? Whether you're talking about further education for training or employment, um, that support system is all not, not really well in place. Um, 
there are some there are some things that have been uh, happening uh, under the youth and sports ministry from before and has continued until now uh, under their ILKBNs all their national training institutes for vocational and things like that they started off with a program that will support you know individuals who are autistic and I understand that they're slowly expanding the program so things like that are great and then you have you know the wonderful people like Gamuda Enabling Academy who will train people to support them be able to transition to the workforce but you know there, there's really not nearly enough at all you know there's there's so much and sometimes the schooling part is the one that you manage to go through but then it's a whole other thing when it comes to to employment right because as I mentioned one of the main features of anybody who's autistic is the social communication issue and when you have that it's not as easy to get along with everybody you know, um, so actually, I'm suddenly remembering one of the misconceptions. One of the misconceptions is that, you know, people with autism, you know, don't quite have the same feelings or they don't understand feelings or they don't empathize and they don't have all those things. But but that's not true either. You know, it's just the way that they express themselves. And yes, it takes a little bit harder to process, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. But when you have these differences in trying to, you know, communicate with people to be able to kind of fit in, and if there's not enough awareness and that acceptance and understanding from people who are around it's really super challenging right yes. if, you, if you can imagine that but i am so hoping that you know because we're in april now i mean the reason i've been given this opportunity and i appreciate it again you guys is that it's a autism month right and as we talk about it more i'm hoping that maybe even potential employers might understand a little bit make some adjustments even in the interview process mm. maybe allow for people to be able to to do a short trial period perhaps you know rather than just say okay i'm just going to judge you by your resume your interview and that's it but to give that opportunity and see is there a good fit can we you know maybe try to accommodate you and understand each other so yeah i'm i'm going to stop for now because i i could go on i think that there is a lot of things that we want to see hopefully improve and change with time but you know i believe everyone can do can can do a little bit i don't think we should uh, you know, only be re relying on government, and some of the initiatives have happened. Um, they have been amazing. Uh, you know, government-related institutions like PDRM, fantastic. Mm. We have a police force now that went through training to understand the needs of, of uh, you know, people like this who are different, right? So whether you're going to end up being a suspect or a witness to the victim, they will now know better how to handle and manage these situations. So there are things in Malaysia that are, you know, that are great. Don't get me wrong, uh, but um, yeah, hoping definitely for things to improve. Yeah. yeah, there are so many things that we need to improve and there are so many things that we need to do better, but we are actually doing better. Am, uh, am, am, am I right, Nori? We are actually uh, doing going better and better. I think so. I think every year we've, we've seen changes and improvements and things like this. I mean, oh, there was this fantastic initiative that was just announced by Malaysia Airports, like, right, barely two weeks ago. So now for KLIA uh, 1 and 2, they have all been uh, trained. They've come up with this effort called the butterfly effect. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm so proud of, uh, you know, Malaysia Airports. And, and this is like first in the region. You know, that we've been able to have services uh, that are geared towards people with hidden disabilities, i.e. the ones that are not so apparent, right? And as I said, we have been better at accommodating and providing support for people with physical disabilities, but, you know, not as much for this. And and suddenly this, this, this whole thing about, um, you know, opening up the world of uh, traveling and things like that to everyone is now possible because they're going to support you from whether you enter parking or the curbside all the way uh, well beyond the gate literally to the door of the airplane and they and they've gone through training and they've put up all kinds of you know information and signage in the airport there's even a calming room you know for people feel overwhelmed because these are some some of the things that happen when you have a sensory processing issue you either are hypersensitive or not sensitive enough to certain things so when you're hypersensitive big crowds loud noise these things can be overwhelming and, and and you know you can imagine what an airport is like right so when you have that um you know it can be very very challenging i mean i know families who have just said you know what nope traveling is just not going to be for us or we don't know when that can ever happen but now we have something like this yes yes 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that is so good to know that there is so many improvement that we are having right now. 呃，我们会稍微的休息一下，待会回来呢，我们将会继续的探讨啊，有关于我们这些自闭症孩子，当他们要去到这一些主流的学校的时候，是不是他们的家长也遇到相同的问题呢？待会回来我们继续再聊。优化城市的质感，深化生活的质量。城市生活家。刚刚我们在上一段呢，就有特别的分享到啊，其实对于很多有自闭症儿的家庭呢，其实对他们来说是非常的呃不容易的，因为当。要把这个孩子送到学校的时候呢，当然校方绝对是能够接受的。可是问题是，这个孩子在学校当中有没有办法真正的成长呢？这就是我们今天要探讨的一个全面性的问题啊、哦。Maybe Nori, you can uh give us more advices, especially for many families with autism kid. Maybe they are struggling in deciding whether or not to send their children into mainstream school. Or maybe they should send their children to special education school. Any advices for them, especially for those who wanted to、um, eagerly send their kid to mainstream school so that they seems normal,、uh, but you know, always these ex- expectations are just not met. Hmm. Yeah, you know, schooling is a very, very big topic, and these things are difficult. I think for any parent these days, the question of education is a big one, right? What do we do? Um. So there are a few things to talk about here. I think one, first of all, is 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 to is to if you have the privilege, right? If there is if this option is open for you as an opportunity of choice, right? Then to consider is mainstream necessarily you know the goal? Is this you know? Because really, I think you have to look at every child.、Um, so when you have a child with special needs.、Um, uh, There is definitely、um, the belief, and the data and research has showed that you want to send them in for some educational support as early as possible. And this is called early intervention, right?、Mm. Um, and and you can start off in in different ways. You can start off with、uh, you know special schools and special centers, and、uh, and and there are those out there, especially in Klang Valley.、Uh, you can also start with.、Um, You know, a, a good preschool that is that is inclusive, and I think one of the reasons that the the tadika and preschool level in in Malaysia, at least in the urban centers, is not too bad, is because、um, the Montessori style of of you know teaching a child is pretty popular, and that accepts a child at their own pace, and they look at things like life skills, they look at things like community. So there's an opportunity for the kids to all be together. So I would say that you know look at those as well. Uh, and and also consider, I mean, when you get your diagnosis, and you would have gotten a diagnosis either from a,、uh, you know, from from a qualified professional, right? Either a developmental pediatrician, it could have been a, a psychologist or somebody trained in the field to do the diagnosis.、Um, You can you can seek advice from there as well. You know whether they because again, what level would your child be at? Right, you might be.、Uh, it might be an autistic child who is a little bit more like having Asperger's syndrome, and they used to use this word to dis- to describe those who had a milder form of autism, where maybe they were not so profoundly affected, and they can cope within more typical settings. Right.、Um, so I would I would take that advice from there. Now, now when it comes to sekolah kebangsaan, as I mentioned before, the options are for.、Um, A PPKI school. If you're talking about,、uh, you know, the opportunity to be with teachers who are trained,、uh, and you know that option of being, you know, with、uh, with a mix of children, right? Children who might be more similar to your child if your child is, you know, differently abled and autistic, as well as having the other children there. Bear in mind, though, that this, you know, the classes and things like that are separate. Yes. Now, if you have the opportunity,、uh, then I would look for, you know, I would look for support from either. Associations or private schools or private centers, if this is possible.、Um, in terms of the government,、uh, if you talk about、um, children who are more severely disabled or who who have、uh, at least starting off, you're seeing that they're more challenged, and、uh, you know you might not feel that you have. Uh, a lot of opportunities available to you due to financial constraints and things like that. We had we do have pusat dalam community, 
PDK, and yes. those are all around the country. And then uh, our National Autism Society of Malaysia also has centers. Nasom has centers. There are, you know, different private foundations that are also doing good work. Uh, for example, I think Yayasa Nanyang is one of them that is known for doing their program with autistic children. Um, and a whole bunch of centers where, I mean, if you even Google online now, the, you know, the options are there for you to look. And I think um, you're going to have to do a bit of that legwork, right? You have to see what is the best fit. Even for children with more, tip I mean, even for families with more typical children, parents now will go out there and, you know, check for themselves, right? Speak to the different schools and, 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 and take it from there. Um, but I would say, you know, see how your child goes and, and don't, don't maybe worry too much about needing to be exactly in this type of school and this type of situation. Give it a little bit of time. Children do learn differently, you know, all children and 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 things like this. Um, and you're going to have to get get used to it a little bit, uh, but slowly, slowly, yeah. Yep. So from what you share, uh, I found that creating um, awareness is easy in our society, but when it comes to um, transforming it into inclusiveness, uh, inclusiveness, appreciation, and also uh, acceptance, it can be quite tough. So why is there such a gap? So how do we reduce this gap? Okay, that's a fantastic question. Thank you so much. You're right. Um, awareness is one thing, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, awareness... Awareness is just really the beginning, right? I mean, if we're talking about autism awareness right now, the whole celebrating, you know, Autism Awareness Day in early April, this was something in the 70s. You know, we have to really move on from there. Um, you have to, uh, you know, I think you're right. We do want to move on to acceptance, appreciation, and inclusion. Uh, these, things are, these things are very, very important. I mean, if you look all the... You know, the data, the research and everything that we know today. And for me, as a Malaysian, I mean, the lived experience is that diversity. And when we talk about people with autism or those who are differently able, we're talking about neurodiversity, right? The, the How the brain is working differently. Now, diversity is something that, you know, uh, that provides uh, strength, that provides benefits. I mean, to any organization, big and small. And here we are, we live in Malaysia, I mean, D diversity is part of our DNA. We are so fortunate. We've had this whole ages long history from back when we were a port and between the tra trade route of two huge countries and civilizations. And, you know, it was born from there. And I really believe that that is part of the reason why in some areas, our relatively small country has been able to punch above its own weight. Really, we have this diversity. And for me, I hope that, you know, in particular for Malaysia, we just take it to that next layer. That next level is the neurodiversity. Hopefully it can come from there. So essentially what I'm saying is, it's not just that every human being deserves to be appreciated and recognized, you know, and accepted you know, like being able to tell someone, I see you, I get you, I take you as who you are. This is the right of every human being. And you want to be able to support this. Nobody left behind. I'm also saying there are actually benefits to community as a whole, everybody, you know, and anybody who has, you know, somebody who is who is different in their lives. I, I, I promise you, if you speak to them, they will attest to how much this person has contributed to them too. You know, I mean, my son, Timo, I mean, I, I have three boys. They're all, they're all great and cheeky and amazing. But for Timo, I mean, he is our blessing. I'm very sure, and I've said this to so many people, I think that at the end of it, Timo will bring me so much more than I will ever be able to bring him. I mean, that opportunity is there. You get this opportunity to interact with somebody who's different, any kind of differences, right? If you go out there and you think about the, the friends you have who are Malay or Indian, and you reflect back what you've been able to give them what they've been able to give you right and thinking about all of that is just um you know there's so much we we learn from each other i mean it's it is it is how we should be we're not there yet because i think there are many cultural um taboos that is across you know many many different cultures in other parts of the world in other parts of the world too it's still very difficult i think for some people to to accept because it's um it's a it's a big thing, right? It's a big thing to suddenly be diagnosed and and find out, uh, you know, that that you have a child who who has who has disabilities. But um, 
Okay, so I'm remembering like a Chinese proverb. I think it's a story about this man who lost his horse. Do you know this one? Um, oh, Mandarin pronunciation. Yeah, so Sai Wang lost his horse, right? So there's this guy lost his horse. And the neighbors are like, Ayo, I'm so sorry for you. Like, oh no, you lost your horse. And he was like, you know, this might not be such a bad thing, right? And then, true enough, his horse came back with another horse. You know, and the story, <laughs> the story continues, right? Yeah. Then, then, then apparently one of his family, his son or something, riding the new horse, fell off the horse, broke his leg. Neighbors also upset and go, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, oh, no, what happened? And he goes, you know, that might not be such a bad thing, right? So the neighbors were congratulating him, got new horse, and then I'm so sorry for you, somebody got hurt. And then apparently then, you know, sometime later, the army came into town or something, recu recruiting young soldiers. They have to go to war, but his son didn't have to go because his, you know, he was, his leg was, you know, injured and things like that. So essentially, it, it just means that we don't really know, right? What is it? What is it that life is going to bring you? You know, it yeah. could be a blessing in disguise, and there are some things. So, so you see, even even though we have cultural taboos, we also have this great wisdom, right? ancient wisdom from within our own cultures to remember this as well right to consider this you don't know what what has uh you know what has come to you and um you know it time will tell and of course your own actions your own attitude towards these things right what what you can make of it so exactly. you know um i yeah. encourage people to look at it that way yeah, yeah you you remind me of uh, what forrest gum said life is just like a box of chocolates Exactly. <laughs> yep. yeah. You don't know what you get until you try, right? Yeah. Life is a box yeah. of chocolates. It's true. I, um, there's another little, there's another nice story, if I may. Um, this was actually written by a, a mother um, who had a child with Down syndrome. So not the same as autism, mm -hmm. but uh, embraced by, you know, those of us families, many families uh, in the community who, um, you know, have a child who is... Um, who is different, right? So this lady, um, I think her name was Kingsley. She talks about how it's like, you know, when you get a diagnosis like this, it's like when you're planning for a trip, okay? You get excited. You want to go to Italy. Uh, you plan for Italy. You read all the stuff about Italy. You start, you know, mapping out everything that you want to do, okay? And then it's time for your trip. You get on the plane and then you land. And then suddenly the announcement is like, hello, welcome to Holland. And you're like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Welcome. Oh, there. <laughs> well, yeah. What, what, what is this, right? What is this? What is going on? So, um, to kind of cut it short, it essentially means, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get a shock. It's going to be hard. You're probably going to, you know, have to process all these feelings of like disappointment and fear. You might need to to grieve for a little bit. But you know, the the point of the story is also to say. Don't get so caught up with the fact that you couldn't go to Italy. You're going to miss out at, that Holland might be amazing. You know, I there's good things about Holland too. Yes. Um, you know, I, and, and I know that's not, you know, it's not the best of comparisons. I mean, I am a parent myself. I know how challenging it can be. So I mean, it's not to say that it's as simplistic as imagining that, oh, it's just like planning two different trips lah, and then you go to one country instead of another country. It's, it is not as easy as that. But, but I mean, the essence of it is to say, don't, you know, get fixated on the things yep. that, you know, that, that you didn't have, you know, and that you, you, you get too sad or too depressed or too down for so long that you forget to notice what you've been given instead. And that might simply be something amazing, you know. I mean, how many of us have seen Plan A tak jadi? It becomes Plan B, and Plan B is the right plan. So, yeah. take heart, take heart. Yeah, exactly. I think there is a good story, as in, um, maybe it can be challenging to have an autistic child, but then who knows? It can be turning out to be something better. So I think everyone is quite curious about Timo also, <laughs> as Nori just now mentioned yeah. about Timo. Maybe we can talk more about uh, how is it uh, gonna be and how is it be, uh, how is it like when you are a parent with autistic child? Maybe Nori can share more about that. We'll 
这里是让你每次收听都有收获的 City Flux。那刚刚呢，波诺利在上一节呢就跟我们说到，呃，大马，大马目前呢、啊、在自闭儿，也就是说这些特殊人士呢，在面对这一些教育还有就业环境之下所面对的一些问题，然后政府在这之上还可以做一些什么？那么我们现在呢，可能请波诺利呢跟我们分享一下他的个人经历哈。波诺利 ，maybe you can share with us about your story. So what is your A、uh, reaction and why BKJ reaction when you found out that your second child's Timo will be autistic. So how did you find it out? Okay. Um. So at two and a half, um, we already noticed he was a little bit different. Um. You know, he wasn't making as much eye contact, and he was um a bit more withdrawn. Uh. So we ended up. You know, finally he was diagnosed at three with a developmental pediatrician. Uh, somehow, I think I knew in my head.、Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was a mother's gut sense or something. I had already thought about the A word. So、yeah. when I found out, it was、uh, you know when well when we found out, we were like okay, action mode. You know, it was like all right, what do we have to do? These are all the things we need to do for him. Now we are very very fortunate and blessed. Our families on both sides. I mean, we have a very colorful family as it is, and we already have one neurodiverse、uh, individual in the family.、Um, our niece、uh, has Down syndrome, so、um, we didn't have to go through that process of, you know,、uh, a denial or the family not in, being able to understand or accept. So we're very fortunate in that way. So we immediately got into gear and in trying to figure out therapy and early intervention and parent training and all sorts of things. So we really got into that mode. And that was good in the sense that、um, you know it is important, as I think I mentioned earlier, about you know the early intervention. Now we know now that the brain is you know has neuroplasticity. It's amazing, and so many things can continue to change and grow. And assuming that you don't have、um, an illness, disease, or condition, even if you're in your 80s or 90s, you can still learn things, right? But there is a window which makes it a little bit easier. When you're younger, up to seven, it it is easier. It's just easier for for the human brain to adapt and learn more. So we got into that mode.、Uh, but I would have to say that、um, it it was not like necessarily the full acceptance of the impact of what it meant, right? I think for both of us、um, down the road, it was maybe even as long as a year and a bit later. I mean, even for myself. I remember this moment when it hit me. It it finally actually hit me that this was lifelong, right?、Yeah. And that was big. Yes, that was big. So that was like another step after that towards. So you know, it took. There were many stages of of processing all of this,、uh, but you know, Timor is super fortunate and lucky, and and、uh, in the sense, you know, and so is our family you know, to be able to. To look out there for all kinds of support, I definitely recommend. I, I tell all new parents that you know parent training or educating yourself is one of the biggest things that you can do.、Uh, keep yourself as upskilled and as trained as as best that you can. I mean, we're doing a program now in our in our kids' gym that's doing that. We're supporting parents、um, build confidence and skills so that if they have to, like in the pandemic, they had to become their child's own therapist, just like many parents had to become their child's teacher. Um, do this. It's very, it's it's very very important,、um, and and that would be you know really helpful. So yeah, we had different stages of the acceptance. Sure, Nori. Just now you、uh, shared that、uh, you do realize at a point that、uh, it will be a lifelong thing. I think、uh, for that,、uh, for having that thought, it will be just very overwhelming. And for some other parents, maybe they they will be thinking that if I do have a autistic child, then parents need to give up their dreams. They need to give up their goals in life because there are so many sacrifices needed to、uh, to be made. So, do you agree on that, Nori? If there is any goals or dreams that, as a parent, I do want to、um, fulfill, but I do have a autistic child, so any advices that you will give them? Ah. Okay, so yes, you're you're going to have to make a lot of adjustments. That is no doubt. There are compromises that have to be made. There's a lot of planning. You know, you you do really have to sit down now and consider,、um, you know, things like budget planning, right? I mean, the financial financial planning. These these are things that are real.、Uh, I am not going to minimize them, and they're they're very difficult. They're they're big big things, right? Obviously, that they are they are life changing. Now, having said that, I mean this comes from 
having children anyway <laughs> and other things that can happen in your life. And I think you've got to take that in stride and do the best that you can. I would say reach out for support. Um, yes. Reach out for support. For example, I mean, there's a huge Facebook group called Autism Malaysia. They are the largest uh, grouping of uh, parents online on 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 Facebook that that have you know they have great content and a lot of you know support from each other. You reach out for support. Reach out for support amongst, of course, your own family and friends. Explain to them. Tell them they might not even know and they might not be able to get it or they're they're scared or they're what. But you know, again, right? I mean, you have to be able to to be that advocate for yourself, you know, as a caregiver also and for your child. So um, get that support that you need, um, you know, make it happen. And as to these hopes and dreams and things like that, I think we should all still have our hopes and dreams and our goals. I mean, why not, right? This is what it is. I mean, for yourself or even for your child, everybody has their own potential. You've got to find that, that space where that can kind of happen. And, you know, I'm saying this now and maybe somebody is listening and they're at the at the most difficult of times or something is really hard. I mean, I can tell you now, Timur is going through puberty. He is 12 years old. It is tough having puberty. I mean, going through puberty is very difficult for any human being. Going exactly. through puberty in a pandemic is difficult. Going through puberty in a pandemic with autism is, phew, it's another kind of thing, right? But you cannot lose, lose track of like, you know, the big things also. You know, you have short-term goals. You have very mini, mini goals. Then you have medium term and all this. You know, keep those things in mind. And I think, you know, try to keep those dreams alive. I think when we visualize something we imagine, you stand a, a far better chance of seeing those things happen. Don't, don't give up on all those things, right? Be practical. Do what you need to. But that doesn't mean you have to give everything up. You know, it, it's life. Life is like that. It's going to throw you things. Do it. Do the best that you can. And if today was horrible, start tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is another day. <laughs> so, yeah. Fonori, before we end our interview today, do you have any words for parents or our society? Ooh, um, you know this. Okay, this whole month, I've actually been been putting out a little ask, like a little request out there. I, I'm I'm hoping that for anybody who's listening, anybody who's been made a little bit more aware of what autism is, I'm really, really hoping that perhaps everybody can consider, is there something that they can do, even if it's something simple and small within yes. their own lives, in their own context, is there anything that you can do to make things a little bit better and push towards this, you know, uh, from awareness to acceptance, appreciation and inclusion? Uh, it could be a little thing, right? It could be have a conversation with somebody else about, you know, after hearing this interview so that you can spread more awareness. Um, if you happen to know somebody or like a parent, you know, have a chat with them, you know, ask them out for, you know, coffee or something. It can be a little lonely because not everybody, you know, will understand and appreciate. Or if it could be something bigger, if you are an employer, right, potentially with something, you know, consider hiring a neurodiverse individual make those little adjustments and things like that to accommodate having these things. And, and we know what it is, right? I mean, we talk about these as, as current trends and issues all the time. Diversity in the workplace, yes. uh, how important this kind of thing. Huge, amazing companies, you know, like tech companies or Microsoft, they purposely look for people who think differently. You know, we are all the better for it when we interact with each other. So, you know, I'm just saying... Uh, Take heart, have hope, you know, keep going. Uh, we are all uh, parents. Parents have the same heart. I think that's maybe a Chinese saying as well. I'm trying to recall. And then, uh, you know, I mean, for me, um, it helps to be a person of faith from my own faith. You know, I'm Muslim. You know, we learn that, you know, God has told us that with every difficulty, you know, there is relief. With, yeah, not after or not something you hope for or that you have to work for, but... You know, thing, there's things you can do. There are all these different things that, that you can do. So I'm hoping that everybody will come away with a little bit more of not just the awareness, but autism appreciation. And, and don't forget, you're not alone. You can reach out in, in, so many different, in so many different ways right now. I mean, look at these guys today. They've opened up this space for me to speak. <laughs> to the radio station and we'll have answer some of those questions. Thank you again. Thank you so much. I'm glad. Yeah. It is actually our honor to have Nori in our in interview today. I think uh, Nori has given us so many positive and good encouragement, especially for the parents 
and also to our society. There are so many things that we can do. Uh, it can be very simple. It can be very little. But these uh, uh, actions can be very meaningful to our society. 那今天呢，真的是非常谢谢有 Nori 在我们的节目当中分享了这么多。如果你本身真的是希望说可以了解更多的话呢，绝对是可以去到我们的 CD Plus FM 的 MY， 可以再重新的听过呃这个呃这个访问。同时间呢，也可以了解更多。今天非常谢谢有 Nori 在我们当中哦。Thank you, Nori. Thank you. Terima kasih.